Hello, and welcome to the dining room, but clearly not for camera gear, because looky here. I finally got the PlayStation 5 with the disk drive that I wanted to get almost two years ago when they first came out, but they were impossible to get. And I, I got really lucky and managed to sneak in and, and grab one in front of all the scalpers at GameStop. And then so over the intervening couple of years, I every now and then I check Amazon. They only have the scalped ones for like $900, $1,000, $1,200. Well, the other day I got on Amazon and it said, request an invitation. And apparently within 72 hours, they'll invite you back. Well, they didn't invite me back. But then I went to the Walmart website and they said, oh yeah, you want one of these? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it'll be there. It'll be there in five, five days. So here it is. Now it's the Horizon Forbidden West bundle, which means it cost an extra. So instead of $500, it was $550. I'll live with it. So today's video is going to be complicated and long because first I'm going to unbox this. That'll be the next chapter. Then I'm going to do a bunch of stuff to, to get the stuff off my old PS5. So that'll be the next chapter was, was be step one of the migration, which is backing up. Then I will install, set this one up. And then I will do the start the restore and restore the old one to here. And I have a lot of explaining to do. In fact, let me start with my explaining right now. And oh, by the way, if you don't want to hear my, my story, please skip ahead and I'll, I'll start opening this box. So I wanted to, I wanted this one. I wanted the, the little disk drive on this. I think this camera can see the little disk drive slot on this side. I wanted that from the get-go because I have all these uh, discs for PS4 and everything and I couldn't get one. But I said, well, I'll buy one. I'll buy one of the, the, the digital only and then I'll get around to getting one. I'll get one of these later after the thing dies down. Who knew it would take two years for the hoopla to die? Actually, it's still barely died down, but it, Again, I got one for like regular price, so like to win. And I told my friend Brian, I said, well, because his birthday falls around Christmas time, and I, I got uh, the original PlayStation came out in November, and I figured I'd have one probably by his birthday <laughs> a couple of years ago in January. And I, uh, I said, I'll get when I get this one, the, the one with the disc drive, I'll give you the gold one as like your Christmas and birthday present. Well, that Christmas came and went, and birthday came and went, and then another Christmas and birthday came and went, and we're coming up on another Christmas and birthday, but this time he's actually going to get it. And he's finding out by watching this video. So if, if you think I'm excited, you can't imagine how excited he's going to be when he sees this and knows that he's getting it. Well, I, and I just said it, but I think he figured it out as soon as he saw it. Oh my God, I'm getting a PlayStation 5. So I've seen other people unbox, uh, in fact, this particular edition because the, apparently the log jam broke and everybody who, who's been, I just, I watched the video, some guy, he's been, he has not, this is his first one. He's been trying to get it since it came out. But I know from those videos, where well, I'm going to put this on the floor because you know what's in this box? Another box. So up top we have this box. So these are the accessories. And by the way, I'm really, I'm not going to use these because as you know, I already have a PlayStation 5. So I already have all this stuff. So I will be just putting this accessories box back in the box that, for the other, with the old one to give to my friend. So you have the booklets because you have Sony, you know, Sony and their booklets. But there's a quick start guide, which my friend will need. The stand, which is very cool. See, it comes ready to, for if you're going to lie it on its side, this hooks onto the back. By the way, conveniently, I'll, and I'll show you when in a close up later, there's like little XO square triangle things that are this long on the back. So you know exactly where this fits. It fits, they fit, it fits right on the ends of those. But if you're gonna screw, if you're gonna stand it up straight, then you turn this this way, and look, a little screw pops out so that you can put a screw in and take the. Th 
So it's very ingenious. I lie mine on, on its side, an HDMI cable. And by the way, uh, it, it, if the person whose video I saw was saying, oh, it's just a regular run-of-the-mill HDMI cable. No, it's not. This is an HDMI 2.1 cable that is guaranteed to support 4K 120 hertz. The power cord, again, I have a power cord, and so I'll be using the one I have. And we have the, the at controller, but of course, I already have two that came with my last one, which I will be keeping and using. So like I said, this whole box is going, oh, and then here's the USB-A to USB-C cable for charging and connecting DualSense controller. We will come back here later because I'm going to transfer my M.2 SSD from my existing PlayStation to the new, to, to this PlayStation. So I'm going to do that here. So this is basically a, a complete migration guide for PS5 to PS5. And if you take out the backup and restore part, it's a setup guide for a PS5. And it's also a guide to how to put, put it in M.2, but it's also how to take one out and move it over. So this video will cover most of your setting up a PlayStation 5 needs. So I erroneously thought that when I moved the M.2 SSD to the new PS5, it would format it, which it turns out it doesn't. So I didn't have to do this, but what I'm doing is copying my PS5 games off of the M.2 SSD onto console storage because console storage is all that you can back up. You cannot back up the M.2 SSD or the uh, USB drive with your PS4. So. Here, you know, it was 37 minutes. It wasn't a big loss. But then once that's done, I can go back. See, and there's the free space. I've filled up now. Now I can go to system and go down to backup and restore and back up my PS5. <clears throat> that first step took two minutes. And there's the name of the file it's going to create on the USB drive. And here we go. And that went fast, but then it restarts to actually start the backup. And it took three minutes before anything really happens. Then the backup starts. And then it takes like two minutes before anything actually starts being backed up. I guess it's thinking. And then the backup goes. And I'm, I, by the way, you're not going to have to sit and watch the whole thing. We're going to, yeah, three hours, three and a half hours later, you will see. And then two more minutes later, before it finally says, I'm sorry it's so dim, but the, the screen went dim because there was no uh, input from the thing. And now it's restarting. You just watched me back up. For me, I just came from the table where I unboxed the, uh, the new PS5. But then you, in the meanwhile, have watched me back up, which that was actually, for me, that was yesterday. So while I was waiting for this, I did all the backup stuff. So now I'm going to put the new one in place of the old one, using all the same cables and connectors and everything. And then, I'm going to start setting it up and they, it comes with HDCP enabled. Well, HDCP, I can't do screen grabs. So like all that nice, pretty screen stuff that you saw, which by the way, I edited down from like four hours to like two minutes. You're, you're welcome. But, but I can't do that until I've got it set up and can go in and turn it off. So you're gonna you're gonna watch some of the setup on the on the big screen here. It's in here. Ooh, nothing like a pristine, pretty new PlayStation. Ooh, it's fatter because it has the little disc drive on it. So that's the old one. The next thing I'll be doing with that is taking the. M.2 SSD out to move over to the new one. There's this wonderful thing that plays only the first time that you boot it up, and I, this. And I really wish I could do a screen capture of this, but you can't because HDCP is on and my screen capture thing won't work. So you're only going to get to look at it this way.
I believe that's what's going on right here, isn't it? Yes. It's perfect. Okay, I can see that. You may not be able to where you, from there, but I think that's barely visible. That's barely visible. I don't have any PS5 game discs because I bought the digital version, so I'm going to continue with that disc. I'm going to optimize my experience. I'm going to agree to the terms and conditions. I don't, I don't know, I went by real fast. It said I'm, I'm actually agreeing for everyone who will ever use this. This is very important. In order to restore the backup I made yesterday that you watched before we came in here, they have to be the same, the system software has to be the same level. So you have to update the software on your new one before you try to restore your old one. Okay, well, I signed in on the phone, but since I have a PS5, it apparently thinks I was trying to sign on for that one. So I'm going to have to... Uh... Okay. Okay. Ah, see, this is why when I use the app, it... But I... Console sharing and offline play on the PS4. They called this, you know, your 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 primary. You know, you'd set your one PS4 as your primary. Well, console sharing and offline play that makes this the primary. And see, because if I click enable, it will disable it on my old PS5, which is what I want. In fact, I was gonna disable it on the old one as part of the video. Get the stuff I did yesterday, but. Then I read that, oh, you don't have to because it'll do it automatically. So, I don't have a PS4 involved anymore. So now, system. HDMI right here. Boom. Disabled HDCP, which means now I can capture the screen with my Elgato device. Okay, well now I'm gonna stop recording out here. Now we're ready to start the restore. So we go to system software, go down to backup and restore, pick restore, pick the file on the USB drive. Now this says, notice you can't restore M2 SSD. Console sharing and offline play will be disabled. I just enabled it, but we'll have to enable it again. Oh, and if you don't worry about that thing about the other PS3 because PS5 because this is basically going to be the same PS5 and it will not return to its current state. They really try to scare you into not doing a restore, but not to worry. All those things are fine. As you'll see, it's all going to work out. Three minutes later, it actually starts calculating how long it's going to take. And then two minutes later, it, it's going to start and by the way, it says seven hours. It ends up being, I think, three hours, three, about three and a half. I think three hours, 20 minutes. But it took a while. And then it restarts. And then when we get back in, you will see. Well, I have to rebuild the database again because it's all new stuff now. Got all this stuff that, in system storage that wasn't there before. And we're back. And now I have to sign in again. This is one this is actually the most annoying thing because my password is hard to type on the screen. So let me sign in. 
get my verification code. By the way, if you don't have it, you should turn on two-step verification. So people aren't doing stuff. I have it turned on on everything that I can. Okay, now we go up here. And we have to turn back on the console sharing and offline play, which is down here under users and accounts other. See, it says I don't have one because it's supposed to, it was this one and they turned it off. I don't. And we're done. So while the restore is running in the other room, so I'm restoring what used to be on the system storage in here. So while that's going on, I'm going to take advantage of this time to remove the additional M.2 SSD that I added in the video that's linked down below. It's relatively easy. The key is to have the PlayStation in the appropriate direction which is facing down. If you have the disk drive one, it's easy because the, the disk drive would be on top because in the normal position, the disk drive is on the bottom. But here, it's it, if you're looking at the back, and here's the, the, the front swoopy part, which would be at the top if it were standing up, and your power is on your left, well, then it's upside down. If you have it flipped over the other way so the power is on the right, well, then it's right side up and don't open it. Well, you can open it, but eh. And all you do is you grab this corner and lift a little bit and then push. Now I have done, I've taken this cover off so many times that it just sl slips right off. The first time you do it, there'll be a little bit of pushback. But here is the SSD cover. So you remove this, it's a Phillips head and it's a little tiny Phillips head, but if you have like an iFixit kind of uh, screwdriver, you'll be fine. And then you take this cover off. There we go. And then see there's a little screw holding in the SSD. You'll see how, how this works the other way when we I, I reinstall this M.2 SSD into the new PS5. Because this is a two terabyte Samsung Evo 7100 uh, megabytes per second read rate in a PC, only 56, 5700 in here. But as long as it's over 50, any SSD that does 5500, you're good. And of course, they're all rated now, but when I did it, you were. It's kind of crapshoot, but now they, they, they all say, you know, four PS5. The key thing is you want some sort of heat sink and you need for, for airflow reasons, you, they, you, they recommend, they strongly recommend this cover being on it, which, but it means if you put too big a heat sink on, then the cover won't go back on. So again, uh, read some forums, look, shop around, but you can find out, find one with a heat sink. I, I, this one did not come with a heat sink. I bought this little ice PC heat sink on Amazon. And it's worked fine. It's, well, I, I don't remember how long it's been. It's been months and months since they've, uh, since you've been able to have it. I put it in like, as soon as that software update came out, I got one. In fact, by the way, these have gotten much cheaper in the meanwhile. So you can get uh, like a one terabyte for like near a hundred dollars. And the two terabytes are like 200, 215, 225. So they're much cheaper than they used to be. So I have to put this screw back so that my friend who is getting this, when he gets it, he'll be able to put in an SSD if he so desires. He may not at first because I ran out of space. Because I'm one of these guys that just, I, I buy lots of games. And remember, it was diskless. So I had to, they had to be, I had to download them. Well, then you need a lot of space. Now, the new one has the disk drive. So I could, you know, buy, if it's a game I don't think I'm going to play all the time, I could buy it on disk, save myself a little trouble. Okay. So now we have this out here. We've screwed this back on. And now to put this back, you can see... 
and you see the little the little the little barbs pointing up and then you see there's these little indentations here so you just kind of line them all up and then slide it forward boom we're good to go and of course you do know I'm sure that you can replace these panels. Sony sells them. D-Brand sells them. Actually, I was considering the D-Brand because they uh, they have cutouts. You know where that fit? You saw where the fan was. Well, they have cutouts here. But I'll link the video down below. Uh, a guy tested it. Actually. NAS guy, he, he, he generally does storage stuff, but he, he did temperature testing on the different covers and he found that there was no difference. Having the, having the openings here for the fans, I think it was like one degree cooler. But you do want the heat sink because especially the, 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 while the memory, if the memory uh, chips, the NAND chips get hot, no big deal, but the controller, if the controller gets overheated, it, it starts throttling and slows down. And you do not want your SSD slowing down. Again, never had a problem. And this is the Samsung Evo with a little cheap ice PC. Just as long as there's some sort of heat sink, you'll, you'll be fine. Actually, you'd probably be fine without a heat sink. But, well, you know, if, if you can get one relatively cheap. And a lot, and again, a lot of them come with them now. So, Okay. So we're done with this one. When the restore finishes in there, we'll bring that one in here and put this into the into the new one. And then we'll hook this one back up and brain wipe it, do a system a factory reset, set it back to new from the factory so I can give it to my friend and we'll be off and running. So now, now I know it's upside down. It's upside down cuz I have uh, well, here See, there's the uh, the disc slot. So again, you pull up here. Now this one's never been opened. It's hard the first time. Whoa! That was exciting. Oh, I, I don't know if you... Oh, well, this is the different... These are much wide. They stick out much farther, but I guess that's because of the disc drive here. So, this is exciting. So this one is getting its first M.2 drive. Well, I mean, it has one in there. That's this, this, the system storage is an M.2 drive. Okay. Now see the little screw is up here at the end. So we're going to move the little spacer down here because that's where this one's going to reach to. And you slide it in there. Now in, in my other video you have to, I, I said, you have to it doesn't go in down at the bottom. You have to look. It comes up a little bit. You look at where the pins are, and you see there's a little notch. Well, there's a little notch down there. You line those up. And you stick it in. And bingo. And if you can get the screw in, well, then you, you've seated the pins correctly. Sorry if my big fat hands are blocked. So you screw that screw in. And then we put this back on here like so. Okay, and we have now moved the end dot two. Now I'm going to go back in there. Oh, oh, I see. See that. This one, it had things down here, but here there's this big disk drive in the way. So these have to grab a lot harder. That's why it was so hard to open. So 
I learned something new. If if you have a, a, a disk drive, it's a lot harder to get this thing off. And by the way, and apparently it's a lot harder to get it to line up. Yeah, it's not locking back down. Okay, there's one. There and there. Okay, you're you're there. Ah, that one didn't click like that. This one clicks good. Okay. So now, I think we may be done in this this room. Now we're back on the new PS5, and I'm doing a n unnecessary step for y'all because y'all know that moving an M.2 from one drive to another, it will retain everything on it. I did not know that. I thought it was going to reformat because there were no videos to tell me otherwise. Now you have a video to tell you otherwise. Don't do this. But I have to put all the stuff that I copied to console storage, backed up, and then restored to console storage. I now have to move it back to the M.2 where it was already. See, this is why it's just a wasted step. But you'll see in a minute, it doesn't take long. Notice I'm making a command decision to leave the apps, the PS5 apps like Prime and YouTube and stuff, Apple TV, on console storage. Because as you see up there, on, I hardly use any console storage. Console storage is primarily where my save files are. Eventually, I'll fill up the SSD and the M.2, and I'll have to use console storage. But by the way, oh, wait, eight minutes. It took eight minutes. That's why it's no big deal. So eight minutes, everything copied back. But by the way, most things load faster off the M.2 SSD than off of the console storage, so you really don't want anything on there. And there's my backup disk. Now I'm back on the original PS5, and you'll see what I'm about to do. I'm going to brain wipe it. So I need to go, I don't even need to log on. I just need to go to settings, go to system, go all the way down to the bottom of system software where it says reset options, and pick reset the console, all users and data, everything will be delayed. Basically, it's being wiped back to the state it came in from Sony. So I'm wiping it. So when I give it to my friend Brian, it's ready to go. Mission accomplished. And I learned some things today, which I get to share with you. What you saw, one, is that if you move an M.2 SSD to a, another PlayStation, now it may have to be one that's been restored with your stuff. Because you know all the all the all the things on the SSD were tied to my, my my user ID, my account. So maybe that I didn't have to do the copy everything off the SSD to console storage and then restore it and then copy it back. So I it was a few hours. It was by the way, if it if it hadn't worked, I would have had to re-download all those things. And there's a couple of videos you can go see about the difference between the speed of copying over and copying back versus downloading from the PlayStation Store. And the difference is tremendous. Like I, I think one, it was like 14 minutes, seven minutes to copy it over, seven minutes to copy it back, and it was you know 38 minutes to download it. So 14 minutes versus anyway. But here's a review. So if you're if you if you get a new PS5 and you want to migrate your stuff from your old PS5 to your new PS5, step one is back up your old PS5. You don't have to do all the copying stuff I did because apparently you can move an M.2 and it will recognize everything on it. You back up, then you take your new one, you do the restore, update the system software. They have to be on the same system software for the restore to work. So make sure your new one has the, the latest system software, then do the restore, and now everything's back. And then, if you like, like me, if you have the, uh, the, the M.2 SSD, you can move that over. And if you have a USB you know, extended storage for your PS4 games, and by the way, this is where I ran into a little difficulty, because mine apparently had been gotten corrupted, 
and the PlayStation didn't recognize it. Either one, n neither of them recognized it. But it thought I still had it. I st it thought I, the games were still there, but they weren't. So I had to go into safe mode, which, by the way, if you ever do this, hold down the power button for seven seconds until it beeps again. It'll beep when you touch it first, and then keep holding it down, and it'll beep again after about seven seconds. It'll go into safe mode. You will have to plug the controller in with a cable, a USB cable, but then you can hit rebuild database, and it'll go through and discover that, oh, that USB drive that I thought was there isn't there, and so it'll rebuild the database, and... Right now, it's sitting in there downloading all those PS4 games and stuff that I needed and putting them back where they came from. So, so restore. Oh, and then after you're done, your original, go in and hit the reset all the way down at the bottom of that menu. It was system, and then you go down, you know, reset. And now that is like a new PS5. So, Brian, if you're watching this, you might want to take me to lunch tomorrow and uh, pick up a new PS5 for yourself. Just saying. Anyway. So, that's how you move a PS5 to a PS5. And it's easier than I thought it was. I put in some extra steps I didn't need to, dealing with the M.2 SSD. My bad. Oh, but I did learn a, I did learn a little tip watching some videos trying to figure out what was going on. If you hit... When, when you're on the, the, the main PlayStation screen, you know, you, ha you hit up and then you have to go all the way over to get to like the system and everything. Well, if you hit the triangle button, it jumps over to the right side of that top thing across the top. So you can get right over to the system settings and menus and stuff. Just triangle, you're up there. Anyway, so that's how you migrate a PS5 to a PS5 which apparently no one has ever done, because I did look for a lot of videos. And, and I, again, that's how I, I didn't know that an M.2 could be cut, could, and it would, it would still retain its stuff. Because there was no video that showed me that. So now there's a video on YouTube that shows you all that. So I hope that you're watching this, that it helps you do your migration. It really isn't hard. It's just it's time-consuming. And you can run into troubles like my USB drive where I had to go and rebuild the database and stuff. But again, Google. Google is your friend. And YouTube. Oh, and Google will search YouTube. Anyway. So that's my new PS5. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye-bye.